It can be hard to understand why we need a compensating system on the euphonium. As a visual example, I'm going to use my trombone. The trombone has an F attachment with the trigger, so really it's like a four-valve non-compensating euphonium. To demonstrate, I'm going to use a concert F in the middle of the instrument. That's like a G in treble clef. Normally, that concert F is played in first position. I'm going to do that, but then I'll play the same note with the trigger, and it should sound the same. F with the trigger. Now I'm going to go down to a D, which is in fourth position on the trombone. That's like the E in treble clef. I'm going to play it first in the normal fourth position. Then I'm going to add the trigger. Now, at that point, it's going to sound very sharp. D in fourth. D in fourth with trigger. In order to make that note in tune, I'm going to have to move the slide out a little further, which I'll demonstrate here. D in fifth with trigger. That extra slide length is necessary because when I have the trigger depressed, we've now got a longer instrument. And the slide length that normally would lower it by a minor third down to that D is no longer sufficient to lower a longer instrument down that far. So I have to move the slide out further. That extra slide length that I had to add on the trombone is the same reason we need the compensating system on the euphonium. We have to have a way to add more length, and the compensating system does that for us automatically. On trombone, you have to be aware of what you're doing and move the slide accordingly. On the euphonium, it's taken care of for you with the compensating system. I hope that helps you understand it. If not, go to my website, right on the home page at dwarden.com. You'll find a link that goes directly to an article explaining the compensating system. There's even a visual example there where you can click the valves or pictures of the valves and see what the effect of the compensating system is. I hope this helps.